In this uh, video, we're going to uh, review this $25 thermocouple uh, temperature meter and uh, compare it to some other much more high-priced instruments. This is the uh, instrument that I bought for evaluation. And uh, whatever you do, uh, these uh, infrared things are pretty much useless for electronics work. They're fine if you uh, want to measure the inside of a furnace or uh, the temperature of a turkey or something that fills the full viewing area. And this particular meter uh, has a different kind of pin on it than uh, is popular here in the U.S. And I don't know if this is the same instrument or not. It has a different name there, but this is the one that I purchased here. Okay, the unit comes in a box, has an instruction manual, has batteries. I always use my own batteries. And this handy thing, I'm not sure what it's for, but perhaps it's or something like that. And it also comes with two Type K thermocouples, one of which is already in use. And uh, so it's got everything you need. Now the manual tells us that it's also good for all the uh, popular thermocouples. And uh, I will be testing this on with both Type J thermocouples and Type K thermocouples. So uh, I think we'll talk about thermocouples next. In the U.S., the uh, most popular connector is a flat blade connector. And on this instrument, they're on the front. And on this one, they're on the top. And on the one we're evaluating, they're also on the top. So you want to be sure you get uh, thermocouples with the right connector on them. The tables of uh, thermocouple temperature ranges show extremely high ranges. You know, 2,000 degrees F or 1,200 degrees C easily. But that's the rating of the wire itself. The insulation on the thermocouples that come with with this meter is Teflon insulation, and that's only good to 500 degrees F or 260 degrees C. So if you wanted to use this thermocouple uh, at a higher temperature, you'd have to strip back the insulation to where only some bare wires are sticking out in contact with your high temperature area. Now notice the uh, bead on the end of the thermocouple. Uh, that's because it's actually been welded together. But both type J and type K thermocouples can be soldered. So eventually that bead's going to break off as you use these thermocouples. Uh, but you can strip the wire back, clean it, twist it together, and solder it. Now type J, you can solder with a normal, regular lead tin solder and uh, with, with our rosin core flux. To solder type uh, K, uh, you have to use a, a strong acid flux or a flux made for soldering aluminum. So, here is a type K thermocouple that's been soldered. Now, in the U.S., the color code for type K is the red and yellow. And the, here's a type J that's just been soldered normally. And in the U.S., the color code for Type J is uh, red and white. Now the 
thermocouples that come with this meter. It's hard to see here, but the, the wire insulation under the blue sheath is actually red and white. So initially I was confused whether this was a type J or a type K thermocouple. So I verified it is a type K, uh, but apparently the standard color codes in other countries are different. Now also in the U.S. the connector for a type K is yellow, and that is the same here. I've marked this type K so there's no confusion. And uh, type J thermocouples uh, come with a black connector. And uh, this is a very handy style of connector. Looks like that with no wire on it. But this is 30 gauge type J thermocouple wire, which can be conveniently wound up on a plug. And then you just pay out however much you need uh, for whatever you're doing with it. Here's the uh, test setup we're going to use to uh, test our uh, thermocouple meter. That's a uh, power resistor attached to a small heat sink and under that uh, washer that's uh, under the nut we we can see the blue thermocouple wire that comes with the meter and there's the uh, red and white type J thermocouple uh, that I'm going to compare it to okay we have a power supply here powering that uh, resistor and uh, the two meters here and on this one uh, we have the type J thermocouple running to that heat sink and uh, one just sticking out here in the air for the ambient temperature and you can also see the blue thermocouple for the ambient reading for the other meter. So this has been running for a while and this meter is showing uh, 110 degrees on the heat sink with a 23.3 <clears throat> degree ambient and this one's showing 109.9 in a 22.8 degree ambient. So they're very close. And uh, thermocouples are uh, not extremely accurate. I don't mean the meter, I mean the thermocouple wire itself. Uh, it can vary from batch to batch, plus or minus two and a half degrees C. Now, often when doing uh, temperature measurements, you want to compare the uh, rise in temperature above ambient. So, most two-channel meters have a button like this where we can show T1 minus T2 and then the uh, actual T1 temperature. And we can do the same thing over here. Okay, we have an 87 degree rise above ambient, 87.1. This one's 87.4. So they're uh, both uh, comparing quite well. Actually, I didn't uh, push the button on the, the left meter enough times. There's the uh, rise above ambient. And over here is the same thing. So they're uh, very close. And uh, with this meter, uh, well, with both meters, you can select the type of thermocouple J, T, etc., and back to K. 
So this meter would be fine to use with either the Type J or Type K thermocouple. And uh, I'd say it works fine. While we have a uh, hot heat sink, I wanted to show you something. This is a uh, one of these infrared uh, sensing thermometers. Uh, the big round circle is the uh, sensor and there's a laser uh, that's for aiming it. And uh, the laser has nothing to do with sensing the temperature, only tells you uh, what the sensor is aimed at. And of course, up, when you're up close to something, the laser is uh, not telling you anything. But at any rate, I, I painted this uh, black bar on the heat sink here to show you something about emissivity. It turns out uh, black objects or non-shiny objects emit infrared readily, but shiny metallic objects, uh, even, or even uh, glossy paint, uh, does not emit as well. And this is one of the reasons most heat sinks that you see will be black. So let's see if we can get a reading here. Okay, on the black area there, it's hard to read here. There it's 218 or 19 degrees F. Now when I actually move up closer to the resistor, which we know is hotter, the reading goes down into the 60s and 70, 160s and 170s. So if I go back down to the black bar, 205, come back up to where it's bare aluminum, 148. So uh, to me, these remote sensing infrared thermometers are virtually useless. There are uh, basically three different uh, failure modes for electrical components. Uh, over voltage, over current, or over temperature. And uh, there's lots of uh, multimeters available that are affordable for measuring voltages and currents. And uh, But what you might need in your uh, drawer of Test components is a thermocouple thermometer so that you can know what the temperature of various electrical components are and uh, take measures to keep them cool. With a uh, thermocouple type thermometer, uh, you'll be able to properly measure the temperature of these type of devices and uh, make sure they're properly heat sunk. I'm working on an upcoming video on heat sinking, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. If uh, you got anything out of that video, uh, you could help me by clicking that uh, like button. And if you don't want to miss the uh, next video, be sure and subscribe. And in the meantime, you could watch these two videos.